بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين ما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا صدق الله العظيم Oh dear brothers and sisters uh, we're living in some extremely confusing and unprecedented times and uh, I'm not saying that just like that we're, sit we're living in a time when things that have been considered to be absolutely established and uh, fixed never uh, open to doubt have suddenly become uh, issues of doubt and uh, being non-determined not being fixed ideas regarding humanity itself so even many aspects of humanity have been put up for doubt now and and then once you put it out there that there could be doubt in something you actually get people who take those doubted ideas and consider themselves to be part of that doubt and it's really really confusing so something's for history absolute history that nobody ever discussed and now mashallah the modern world because we've gone so far we want to basically question everything so we're living in those kind of times so it becomes necessary that there be at least one place that our children especially uh, can come and find a safe haven and can find some kind of grounding and uh, make sure that they understand uh, what's going on usually for adults who've lived most of their life in a certain way they would be less prone to doubt although we've seen adults as well they're 50 years old and then suddenly they start wondering what's going on in the world with themselves but with children it's much easier because children are like sponges they take whatever you give them and so there needs to be a place that is solid that we can guide them and that is the home of course it's become more difficult the home has become more difficult because uh, before you could shut the door and you could have one idea um, no other influence only what you say and only those you allow but now with the social media and so on there's it becomes very very difficult social media has become ingrained if you don't want to give them a laptop the school will give them a laptop because they need to do their homework and they do their homework and then they get bored in between and then they go to another website or they chat with somebody so it's very becoming much 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 more difficult that's why i think i think the only way all of this is very very difficult i mean how long do you I was just speaking to one of the security guards outside and uh, mashallah some of our children they like to take a little bit of a break after the tarawi uh, or in between the tarawi rather it gets a bit too much for them so they go outside and so then he said he tells them here they go to another area they go, masjid is a big area so where, where do you go can't keep it all can't have people standing around for that so likewise it's with the internet and with the social media that's why I've been thinking that the only way to um, have the best chance, inshallah, is to develop consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a young age, so that less they have to, uh, less they have to be looked after by adults, they'll have their personal consciousness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that that will help them to stay grounded and fixed and stay away from major issues. I can't see any other way 
because it's very difficult to become a police. Right? That's very, very difficult. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect is probably is the best policy for every adult and for every child. And I think we just need to focus more about that because it's getting more confusing. Consciousness of Allah, how do you develop that in the children? Well, firstly, you, we, we develop that through speaking about Allah and connecting ourselves with Allah in an organic fashion. So you don't want to tell, you don't want to have to tell children, remember Allah, or you can, but you don't have to tell them, thank Allah, or do this for Allah, or do that for Allah. We need to do it ourselves, and whatever we do, the children usually pick up. So if you're having a nice meal, and we have many nice meals, you have some new fruit, or a new item, a new product, a new garment, or whatever, you just have to say, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us this. There was a PhD research that was done uh, on how to bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into education for teachers, for people who teach. So essentially what the researcher, what she suggests, is that every 10 to 15 minutes you discuss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're talking about something of science, subhanallah, how wonderful Allah's creation is. Or Alhamdulillah, Allah has provided us this. You just bring Allah's name into the picture. And when you say Allah's name, there is a certain barakah and a blessing uh, spiritually that comes about. And then whoever's listening, they connect that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to do it in a way where if they've got a new product or something, or you've just enjoyed your meal, you know, say, Alhamdulillah, look what Allah has given us. There's so many other people that suffer, but look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And there's no doubt that when you, even if us, we hear that from other people, we, shukr comes into our heart because the iman is there. We just forget to make shukr because we're not attributing everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the way we'll attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How powerful is this is, I'll give you an example. I think I may have spoken about this last year, but it'll be a, a good refresher. An example, we, when we were uh, teaching uh, maktab once, we were teaching maktab once, uh, I, I used to teach the older students, my wife used to teach the younger students. This was in America, where maktab isn't everywhere, is, is not so important, is not seen as so important. They have a Sunday school idea. As most people, many people are focused on education, secular education, to become the next doctors and engineers and lawyers in town. That's the, the whole focus is on the dunya. So, Maktab is like, okay, Sunday school, we'll do a bit of Sunday school, you know, and then the Sunday school teacher tries to teach them something. By the time they come back the next week, it's all forgotten. It's like trying, I, I taught uh, Sunday school actually, or a weekly school. I taught it for about two months or three months and then I gave up. I said, I can't do this anymore. Because poor students, uh, they do it on a weekly basis, like trying to read a novel once a week. You forget the story. You have to read the first chapter again the second week. Right? I mean, if you're trying to read a novel once a week, you know, you forget the story, right? So it, it's like that. You teach them something and then you have to teach them again. It's just too confusing. But that's what people do because they don't understand the importance of this because their focus is just the dunya. To make a good life of this world. And what most people are missing is that you can have a wonderful life of this world. You just have to think of the next world because the next world comes after this world. So there's no way that you can ignore this world if you think of the next world. But if you only think of this world, you ignore the next world because the next world comes afterwards. If you only focus, it's a simple logic. If you think of the next world, you're still going to have to plan for this world because you can't escape this world. You have to go through this world to the next world. So you still have to uh, you know, focus on this world. So if you're waiting to buy your dream house, you can't neglect your current house right now, can you? You still have to still have essentials, don't you? But you don't only have essentials. You're not going to decorate you know, the current house that you live in which you know you're going to move out in two, three years because you, you, you found your dream house and eventually in two, three years you're going to be able to buy it. You're not going to embellish this house, are you? But you're still going to have to live in it. You're still going to have to get your essentials and move forward. Now, if this becomes, this current house becomes your final house, you're not worried about a new dream house, then you put everything into this house. It's a simple logic. It's a very, very simple logic. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open that up for us. Because when the akhirah becomes a reality, then, then this world becomes even better, inshaAllah. So uh, my wife was teaching the younger children. 
six, I mean, I think there were probably six, seven or eight, two brothers. They just came in. They came in late in the sense that they never went to a maktab before. Uh, the, the father finally decided that, oh, mashallah, you know, we've been there for two years uh, teaching the children. He decided that I'm going to send my children. So mashallah, the two little boys came. So I think I mentioned this before to you. My uh, wife was teaching them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she's describing Allah. How do you describe Allah? Allah is the greatest. He's the mightiest. Allah can do whatever He wants. He's the all-powerful. Nothing can stand in front of Him. Nobody can face Him. Suddenly one of these kids, they say, Power Rangers. I mean, he couldn't help it. You know, you heard all of these power and greatest and mightiest. That must be Power Rangers. Why? Do you know, you know what Power Rangers is? This cartoon or I don't know, this something, right? Because from a young age, they had been seeing that and in their mind, children are very impressionable. They're very impressionable. Although they're born on a fitra, we uh, skew their fitra and we, or we let others do that for us. So in their minds, the greatest entity out there was Power Rangers. So they just couldn't help it. They said it. Inshallah. So you have to say, no, that is not what, that those aren't even real. Right? Santa Claus does not exist. On the other hand, so they were seven or eight. On the other hand, you've got a two, three-year-old or a four-year-old. I can't remember. It was between two and four-year-old. They go to the beach. And when you go to the beach, you see this whole, it was the Pacific Ocean. You see this whole Pacific Ocean suddenly in front of you. And nobody asked the kid any question. He couldn't help it. He said, Allah created this. Like, it just came out. It just came out that Allah created this. So where does that come from? The idea that we've reminded the children about Allah behind, being behind everything, they spontaneously make this decision because that's what it is. So that's what we want. We want them to do that. When they go to high school, we can't police them as to whether they pray Salat or not. If they have God consciousness, if we've explained Salat to them, and if we've explained the worship of Allah, devotion of Allah, thanks to Allah, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them, then this will become organic. They will do this for themselves because they have connected themselves to Allah. From a young age, this needs to be reinforced. And I think one of the a few things that we can do is you read to them. You read to them the stories of the righteous people, the starting from the prophets, and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the seerah, and then the sahaba and so on. Those stories give them models. Those stories give them accounts, incidents, and various different narratives to follow. And that's how they will make their own narrative. They'll see that, oh, these people, they struggled, but Allah gave them something. They struggled, they became successful. Uh, Allah assisted them. Allah supported them. This has to come through. Otherwise, you're just going to take from the world whatever you think is going to support you. People are looking for belonging in this world. People are looking for belonging in this world. And you will go to whoever you think is the strongest. And if you've never been told about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's strength and His power and His capability and His assistance, then you're never going to know that. Many of the, you see, because our community is here, it's like a very, in a strange flux. Because I see many people here have come from other countries. So they were brought up their first few years in other countries that were most likely Muslim countries. Now they've come here. And for them, they think that their iman is stable because they were brought up with a bit of stability. But however, here, uh, th there's no iman. You know, the iman is only in the house and in the masjid if you come to the masjid. But everywhere else, there's no iman. It's just secular world that you live in, that we live through for good or bad, whatever the case is. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mention and his abilities, his attributes, they need to be strengthened so that children pick it up. And we have to do this in a pragmatic way. You can't force it on the children. You have to make it something just natural in the house that that's what you do. That's why we have to do it for ourselves and our children will pick this up themselves. We're going to have to make a change for ourselves if we want our 
generations to succeed. I can't blame the madrasa for not doing their job if they're not doing their job because I am to blame. So, for example, if your children are going to high school, high school, they've just started high school and you want them to pray and it's not a Muslim school, then what do you do? You have to, uh, if you treat them God, if you teach them God consciousness, they're worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll avoid things that they're not supposed to do. They'll pray, they'll try to pray. We have to make it pragmatic for them. We can't just tell them to pray. We have to see what the challenges are to praying in school. There's a lot of challenges to praying in school. The, the, pray, the, the, the school may not have musalla, a, pray, a place for prayer. The, they might not officially allowed you, allow you to pray. That's another issue. Um, they may be difficulty in making wudu. You can't keep wudu all day. So be pragmatic, discuss with them. For example, you know, the, your socks here, uh, they, they cost two, three dollars a pair, right? Three, four dollars a pair maybe. Uh, with, with our kids, they've always had wudu socks that cost like thirty dollars, you know, 15 to 20 pounds each. But it was worth it because it just makes it easier for them to do masah on them, right? So you have to spend money behind this. You have to keep in touch. You have to discuss. You have to ask questions and you have a conversation. They need to understand why they should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The usual example, uh, one, one example you can give is just to show how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and He is responsible and He is kind and He is generous for everything that we have. Uh, what we usually end up telling children is that uh, you know, children have somebody like an auntie or something who uh, gives them a lot of stuff whenever they go to their house. She gives them hugs and gives them lots of sweets and candy and uh, things like this. Um, if you go to, have you got an auntie like that? You do, right? Now, if you go to her house, because everybody has an auntie like that, right? You better have, otherwise you're really deprived if you don't have an auntie that really smothers you, right? So if you go to her house, and you just totally ignore her, and you go and you start playing, what's what, what she going to do? She's going to be happy with you, right? She's going to be unhappy with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us everything, and He give, keeps giving us, he, um, uh, he brought us into this world, and gives us this wonderful life. And if we ignore Him, then what do you expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's going to be upset with us. So that's why we owe it to them. It's just absolute just gratitude. Teach our children gratitude. Very, very important, because we've got so much. We've got so much in this world that we need to teach our children gratitude. Somebody gave us some herbal teas earlier on in the year. They gave us these boxes of herbal teas. They're very nice teas. And one of my kids, he just uh, started enjoying one of them. So I said, look, you know, uh, you've got this tea. You really enjoy it. Number one, thank Allah that he facilitated this. And then you need to make dua for the uncle who gave it to us. Every time you have it. Uh, from a young age, you have to reinforce this from a young age right in a very organic way that's very important not in a strict way that do this and do that because then it, that's the carrot and stick problem that that doesn't it needs to be theirs so um, a lot of the time if they have a little pain somewhere if they've got a little pain somewhere or we, what we've always done first is we read something and we blow on it and mashallah most of the time it's fine it gets fine it's a placebo effect or Allah effect Right? Or placebo effect is Allah's effect anyway. Right? It gets better. When they get old enough, you teach them how to read themselves. And that's what they do. They pray on themselves first. Uh, so many times they've asked, like, have you? Yes, I've read on myself. Then after that, you can use your pills and creams and tablets and that as well. But most of the time, it gets sorted out. You just have to, uh, you just have to, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is available for us. How old are you? How old? You're 12, did you have to think about that? You just became 12 or something. Oh, you're thinking about that as well, mashallah. And how old are you? You're 10. So do you guys have anybody at school, that kind of a guy in your class who kind of bothers you a bit? No, you're, you're fine. You, you have no problem. Yes, what about you? No as well. There's nobody in your class that bothers you. They're all very cool. Okay. Uh, any of the kids, you got anybody that bothers you a bit at school? Mr. Brown? Yes, Mr. Brown with the white hat. Look at your top, your Mr. Yellow, whatever color it is. Do you have anybody at school that bothers you? Any friends that kind of bother you a bit? 
Mashallah, everybody's like. Uh... You got somebody that bothers you? Yeah. Okay. So, what we usually tell them, like, if your kid comes home and says, oh, so and so is bothering me, what you do is you say, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah sorts him out and sorts me out so that we don't have problems because for the next two, three years, you're going to be your classmates together. So if you make dua, if you make dua, then, and Allah sorts them out and you out, it's done. So many times, if I have a little issue with somebody, uh, with a student, with a friend, uh, with, a, with the wife, uh, with anybody, it's a little misunderstanding of some sort that could wound the heart a bit. You just read, Allahumma alif bayna qulubina, Allahumma aslih dhata baynina. The dua from the Quran. Oh Allah, reform. Alif bayna qulubina, which means reform our hearts, mend our hearts, consolidate our hearts, and reform this matter between us. And most of the time, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it just gets mended. So for everything, for everything, we just have to do shukr. Uh, and we do it openly uh, in front of our children so that they understand and they pick this up and they make this for themselves. That has to be reinforced, otherwise we're going to be struggling. Of course, we're going to have to continue with everything, but if they have their own consciousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it very, very easy. Uh, the, the, the last point that I want to talk about today, and maybe it's Friday, so today, tomorrow people work here? No? If you have any questions, I can take a few questions on this subject. Otherwise, tomorrow or tomorrow we can take more questions because tomorrow is Saturday. So, uh, did I give you the example of uh, the girl who uh, doesn't have glasses? No. So she's about she was about nine years old or something, and her older brother, probably about two three years older than her, uh, was going to get glasses because he needed glasses. So she must have said something. So the mum said to her that you need. Uh, you're probably going to get glasses as well. Don't make fun of him or something. You know, you need glasses. You're probably going to get because your mom and dad have glasses. Your older brother has glasses. You're probably going to need glasses because it probably runs in the family. is genetic, right? So, whatever. Nothing happened then. Ten years later, she's got other brothers younger than her as well. And they all have glasses. And her father and mother have glasses and the older brother. But he, she doesn't have glasses. Why didn't she have glasses? Because... She said now, 10 years later or so, she says that when I was young and my mom told me that I am also going to get glasses, I started praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I don't want glasses. And she doesn't have glasses. Allah works for you. Why did she make dua for? Nobody told her. Her mom should have actually said, you know what, just make dua that you don't get glasses. She said, you're going to get glasses as well. Probably not the right thing to say, but just trying to tell her, don't make fun of your brother or whatever, you're going to get glasses. But she just decided to make dua because, I guess, she had learned to make dua. And she felt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so she made dua. And a dua worked for her. Because Allah is there to help you if you call on to Him, for children and for adults. So let us teach our children to make dua. You want to buy a house? You want to buy a new car? Get the whole family to start making dua and doing some awrad. Get everybody to start doing the wird, you know, to, to read whatever dua that you've been given to read. Make dua for Allah. You know, we need a house. You need a new bedroom, right? We need to get this done. Get the whole family today. They learn to do this. And then inshallah, when you have the house, alhamdulillah. When you have the new product or whatever, get them to make dua. You're going to buy them something for eat. Make them do dua for it. As an excuse to make dua to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to give. So why wouldn't he give children, our innocent children? So these are just some pointers. Is that it has to be organic. It can't be forced. It had, they have to see us connected to Allah. And that Allah assists us, helps us, bestows us, gifts us, assists us. Then why can't they feel that they will also be assisted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why will they not feel like that? So... Of course, then after that, you can't just stop. You have to, a few other things is that you have to make sure that you observe who their friends are, where they go online, and so on and so forth. All of that is necessary. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this job easy for us. Uh, that will help us to become closer to Allah, and thus the whole family will become closer to Allah. That's when it really works. 
You can't expect to preserve your children if you don't want to be part of that scene with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, if we are good, our children will be good as well, inshallah. So if anybody has any questions about this, they can ask. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow, inshallah.